one second. Good, All right. And we are now live. Everybody, welcome to a very special episode of Elevate Your Grind. Um, we have two guests today that have no business being on this show whatsoever because they can reach much bigger audiences, but they've always been a friend of Cannabis Labs. So we have them here today with us and are very excited about it. Um, these are two people that I met early on in my career in cannabis. They were great friends we became very close they they did the keynote at an event that i was hosting and at the event we recorded a live podcast i did not record that podcast but what they said in that podcast kind of changed the way that i look at the industry and really kind of reignited my spark to to work as hard as i can um and then i was lucky enough to get involved with them for a little bit so we've got a ton of things to talk about today hopefully we can get it all in please welcome my very special guest today ricky williams and linnea myron Hi, Todd. Thanks so, for having us. Thank you guys for coming on. So how you so you guys are out in California right now where the social distancing came in pretty hard. How are you guys holding up? We're holding up well. We are. I mean, we're having our ups and downs, I think, like like everybody. But, um, you know, one thing we started doing uh, few weeks ago that's been really helpful is uh, as a family, the four of us that are living in the house and are quarantining together, we um, meditate every morning at 9 a.m. and Ricky leads uh, a guided meditation through um, one of the practices of one of his spiritual teachers. And that's been uh, a huge help for our household in sort of maintaining all the, the ups and downs and the um, particularly the emotional aspect of what's what's happening right now. Yeah, you know, the timing has been great for us. You know, we, we've really gotten clear on on our our message, and our message is is a healer in every household. And um, I think in business, you know, business should be an, an expression of the founders of the of the owners and their beliefs into the world. And with real wellness, we're about helping people access real wellness. And the way to do that is to first and foremost, learn to take care of yourself. And so the idea of a healer in every household, yeah, it means that usually in everyone's home, they grow up with one parent or one person that's just the nurturing person that wants to take care of everyone. But also we have to learn to take care of ourselves. We have to learn to be the healer in our own household. And so, part, you know, part of playing the, the healer in this household, I realized that um, we have to all come together and take care of each other. And in my journeys, one of the ways I found is the best way to take care of yourself is through meditation, is understanding your thoughts, your thought patterns, you know, your habits, so you can become aware of them, so you can do something about them. So that, that's awesome. And Linnea, I've got to ask you, did you get lucky and do you, are you quarantined with one of the best people in the world to be quarantined with? And I'm not saying because it's Ricky Williams, it's just looking at his education, I mean, herbal medicine, just everything natural. You guys have all this stuff in your house already. You're able to formulate things to, to uplift you, to make you feel better, to boost your immunity. Um, you know, Ricky has the yoga background. He's got the spirituality background, the meditation background. And then you and I, you know, pulling back the kimono a little, had talked this morning saying that Big Brother really prepared Ricky for this situation. You know, Ricky, I, I know you. I'm talking as if you're not there right now, but did you guys <laughs> just, it. You're like the best <laughs> quarantine team in the country right now? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, for, for so many, so many different reasons. I mean, I felt as this came on and it seems like a lot of people were going to a, a darker place. I felt energized and it reminded me of a couple of times in my life, the most recent being being in, in the Big Brother house. And we were we were trapped in there. We were we were stuck. And when I in order to keep my sanity, I, I started getting back into my yoga and my meditation practice. And it allowed me to, to keep a clear mind when everyone else was freaking out and it allowed me to, to stay all the way through until the, until the very end. And the other time it reminded me of is back in 2004 when I retired from the Dolphins and pretty much gave up my whole life. And it was a scary time because I had no idea where I was, where I was headed and the Dolphins sued me and I owed them $8 million. And so I was in the whole $8 million and, I, and no education, no idea where I, where I was going with my life. And I found myself in Northern California in an ashram meditating and doing yoga. And in those difficult times, I think the purpose of the difficult times is to remind us that we're here for a larger purpose. And if we can turn our attention to figuring out what is that larger purpose, we find meaning in these times and we come out stronger and, and purified, if you will. 
So and, I really, want to touch on that a little really bit. That's really idea obviously. of oh, real wellness. Oh, I lost you for, I didn't mean to talk over you. I lost you for a second there. Go it's on. Right. No, I was just saying, and that's really the concept behind real wellness is that real wellness, you know, yeah, it's important to take care of your body and it's important to have a nice diet and all that stuff. But one of my teachers says, you know, what comes out of your mouth is way more important than what goes in. And so the kind of thoughts you have and the way you live your life, that's how you, that's how you live well. That's where wellness comes from. You know, it's not so much about, you know, not eating sugar or, or all these other things, which again, they can be helpful, but real wellness is about, you know, getting a sense of who you are and, and making a commitment to be yourself in the world. So, so to your point, then, you know, our mental health and our mental well-being is just as important as our physical health. So, you know, cutting out sugar, cutting out or cutting, you know, carbs and, and doing yoga and working out and everything else. If you're not pairing that with mental health, you're really only fixing half the problem. I, I, I think that's what you're really saying. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going a step further to be a little more controversial and saying when you're over, overly concerned about calories and the sugar and all that stuff. That, that creates mental health issues because it, it it means you're overly identifying with the with the physical body you know and as we're all, as we're learning we're getting a firsthand lesson the physical body doesn't always last very long you know and so to to cultivate the parts of yourselves that are more uh lasting you know your mind and your 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 spirit this is really what spirituality is cultivating something the best of you that will continue to live on very cool. So I want to touch, you talked about retiring from the NFL in, in 2004, right? Um, and, and obviously, where I first became aware of you, like everybody else was through football. Um, you know, I always like to tell the story and I'll tell it live here, mainly because my buddy Sean Rigotti, who took the picture, it just came up on my Facebook yesterday, the day before I was going to interview you. I was lucky enough to meet you at a Jay Fiedler football camp um, back when I was like 14 or so. Um, and I remember, you know, getting to work with you, I was an offensive defensive lineman. So I had no business, business being with the running backs, but I got to train with you and it just left a lasting impression on me. But the one thing, you know, that I noticed distinctly about you back then versus you now, not that I really spent that much time with you back then is you're a completely different person, at least from the outside, you very spiritual, very educated, obsessive, um, with the things that you do when you were growing up, so you grew up in San Diego, you grew up playing football, you know, completely different athletics, I'm sure, um, focusing on being the best running back that you can, where, you know, how do you go from being that stereotypical guys, guy, football player, uh, one of not only just a football player, but one of the best running backs of all time that, you know, had a, a style of running unlike no other to this gentle spiritual mindful person that you are today looking at taking care of yourself looking at um you know beyond your physical body like you just said connecting with with the universe well i mean we can we can go pretty deep and uh and i feel permission because you asked the question so this is the the spiritual idea of you're not your body you're something different you know and so when, I, when we're born, we're born pure, right? When we're born, we don't know that we're white or black or a boy or a girl. We just know that we're alive, you know? And so when I was young, and then as we, as we get older, we, we realize all these definitions about us, right? That I'm black and I'm a male and I'm this and I'm that. And when we start to identify with those, those labels, we start to act in a way that fits how a black person or how a guy is supposed to, is supposed to act. And because I was African American and because I had this body and I could move my, my body in space really fast, I got a lot of adoration for what I did in sports. And so I put all my energy into becoming really, really good at that to fit the form. But when I was young, I was a very spiritual person. I used to love going to church. I used to love taking in all this stuff. But as what I was learning in church was crashing up against what society was trying to tell me, I had to make a choice. And I chose to give up the more spiritual side of myself to be a black man, you know? <laughs> and, and as I went through that and, and to some extent reached the pinnacle of that as, you know, winning the Heisman Trophy, being leading Russia in the NFL and doing all these things that, you know, being a successful black man, then I was like, okay, what's next? You know, and that's when I retired from the NFL and started a spiritual life. And I realized that there's something deeper in me um, that wants to work through 
the vehicle, that wants to work through the personality, that wants to work through who, what I've created myself to be in the world. And I started moving in that direction. And, you know, Real Wellness and, and our dating app, these are expressions of, of, that, of that journey. And I really feel I'm at a point where I've experienced a whole lot of stuff and I've learned a lot of stuff. And now, you know, I'm sure there's people that are walking a similar path. And I think I have information and ideas to offer that might be helpful. Yeah. And, and I noticed that when you were advertising yourself on Cameo, you, you made it a point to say, hey, guys, just so you know, I've got so much more to share than just being Ricky Williams, the football player. And it's something that I've got to experience firsthand, which is really awesome. And then having Linnea there to kind of translate some of that for me it has been incredible. But, you know, a lot of this podcast, what we talk about um, is the journey. Right. So 2004, you retire from the NFL. Um, and everybody's saying, oh, Ricky Williams retired to smoke weed. And obviously we know that's not true. There were health issues involved and everything else. Um, what was that decision like? Do you think some of the spirituality that you had within you kind of gave you that 2004, okay, I can keep going and keep making money and keep doing what I'm doing, but I kind of really need to figure out who I am. Is it, was that the thought process or was yeah, it, I was just fed up of being drug tested 52 times a year? No, it's, it's, it's more of the first part. I mean, the, I, I was fine managing the drug test. I got used to it. But the other part, <laughs> the, that deeper yearning was, was, more, was more annoying and realizing, and I, you know, and I, I was started reading philosophy books and started traveling while I was smoking and it started to open my mind and wake up that spiritual side. And so that spiritual side came to the surface and it asked me and like looked in my face and said, what are you doing with your life? And I started to feel like instead of doing something to make the world better, I was just distracting people for three hours on Sundays and that stopped feeling meaningful to me. Yeah, I still love to go out there and, and run because I love to run and I love to compete. But as far as the amount of energy and time I was devoting into being good at that was really detracting from what I could be doing to develop in other avenues and so when I retired and took that year off it was like I had to play catch up and so I, I wasn't even planning it but I just knew I wanted to travel and within traveling you know I met certain people and I had certain experiences that woke something up in me and I realized I'm not a football player at the core I'm a healer I'm here to, to, to give something to the world that helps people feel better and, and be able to cope with life better and from then on I just was drawn to certain healing modalities certain philosophies and it was like the matrix where he plugs in and he starts downloading all this information. And that's really what it, that's really what my life has been like since 2004, when I retired, you know, people don't see what I'm, what I do in my off time, but I spend pretty much all of my off time taking a class, reading something, studying something like it's, it's, it's like a, a passion the same way I was passionate about becoming a great football player. It's now been devoted to, to becoming someone that has something to offer the world. And, and, and when Ricky says that he's dedicated to his studies and everything else, I don't think people realize that, you know, I, I, we do some things together. So I get insight into it. You don't skip class for anything, like <laughs> anything. Someone calls up, Hey, I got a meeting to pay you seven figures on this deal. Cool. Could we do it on Saturday? Like <laughs> it, it's amazing. The dedication and, and you've been doing this. How long have you been studying herbalism for now? Yeah, I started back in 2000, 2004 when I retired. Um, that's, that's when the journey, that's when the journey, and it was interesting. You, I, as I, an uh, adult, you're a better student than I was in college. I didn't go to class for anything and you won't skip it at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm making up for, for my first half of my educational career. <laughs> I, had lot, I had a lot of making up to do. And I feel like it's that movie, Billy Madison, you know, where, <laughs> where I had to catch up so, really quick. So, so Linnea, you know, you, you know, you, you met Ricky, during this journey, right? And you have a very interesting background too, because you've become very, I don't want to say become very similar to Ricky, because I don't want to say that, you know, that you've kind of had your own journey, but you started out as a, a corporate attorney, which is a very, you know, down the middle job, um, conservative, you don't see a whole lot of people that are talking spirituality, uh, natural wellness, and, and, and astrology in the corporate attorney world. You know, tell us a little bit about your journey, you know, how, how it started intertwined with Ricky, and then ultimately, let's get to the story of real wellness, because the two of you complement each other very well, and I, I think it was the perfect storm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what, what Ricky just said about the, you know, identifying with the body and, and, and all of that, it's, it's 
similar in in my life and i think people would would find if they really kind of reflect on their own lives how what he just described of uh you know sort of turning away from certain aspects of who he was in his inner world once he realized he was black and a black man and he could run fast and there were there were certain kind of avenues kind of nudging him into that into that life um to the detriment of these other parts of himself the same thing was was going on with me as a as a child, I was told I was very smart, that I could figure things out, that I was a good reader, that, you know, I was winning spelling bees when I was a little kid. I was, I was winning, you know, short story awards on a national level. And I was getting um, positive reinforcement for that, right? Like, oh, you're, you're good at school. So I went that path, just like he went his, right? I, I don't have the body to, to be a football player. She was but a good gymnast, though. I was a good gymnast. I was a good gymnast. But, 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 you know, people don't pay a lot of money to, you know, watch gymnasts and they don't get paid millions of dollars. But if they did, I probably would have become a professional gymnast, like to sort of like kind of like chase that. Um, but, you know, like him, like in our 20s, like I, I was um, turned on by the idea of being able to use my exceptional skills to make a lot of money. So... Uh, that's what I did. I, I went full force into drop gymnastics, dropped a lot of other things in my life, like art, certain creative um, aspects of my life. And, you know, did the full focus into school and was a good student at an early age and went to Duke and went to Vanderbilt for law school and then worked at the biggest law firm in the world making you know, six figures at, you know, 25 coming out of law school. And that was very exciting to me at the time, but it was very much to the detriment of my um, spiritual life and disconnection from who I really was. And I was 13 or 14 years into this career when he and I met um, at a birthday party about five years ago. And it's interesting how in that first conversation, he, you know, he pointed something out to me about my inner nature. And I laughed at him. Uh, he pointed out a spiritual aspect about me that he could see that I couldn't see in me at the time. And I laughed at him and said, you've got me all wrong. I'm a corporate lawyer. But it's just very telling that that happened in the very first conversation. And now to see what's happened since then, you know, so he comes into my life and just starts kind of putting ideas in my mind, things that people never said to me before, things that my schooling had never said to me. And I realized I was in this very narrow part of a fuller life that he helped me see. And, um, you know, I was a cannabis aficionado before we met. So that already was, was a natural, um, uh, complementarity. I was, uh, you know, by the time he and I met, it was, it was the right exact time to meet because I had now gone through being a young associate at a big firm, doing all of that, making all the money, getting the bonuses, getting the clients, the whole thing and realizing I don't want to be a partner. I can, I can do this and I don't want to do this, but what am I going to start doing now? Um, and so what I was enjoying doing during that time was actually I think I was the only lawyer in my office that was willing at the time to go get a medical recreational card. This mm -hmm. was before California went recreational, right? So we meet in 2015, California didn't go recreational until January of 18. So um, in 2016, 17, um, I would come into work and I would bring, I would bring my, my lawyer friends all kinds of different things for them to take because they were taking a lot of Xanax, drinking a lot of alcohol, taking Ambien, having memory loss. And it really startled me that these very high powered people were having significant health issues behind the scenes that I could tell was not sustainable. So I would go to the dispensaries on Abbott Kinney and pick things up, use them for myself, noticed it started to help me. And I would bring things in for my coworkers and um, really became sort of the, the healer dealer of my office. And I was enjoying that experience more than I was drafting contracts and loan documents at that point. So by the time he comes in, it was enough to push me over the edge to say, okay, this, this urge in you, even though everybody on the outside sees you as corporate lawyer, what was I actually doing? I was thinking about my coworkers, how to help them. They had become my family. We spent 14 hours a day in the office every day. These were my family for many years. So 
I was sort of the healer in my office, in my household office. And I loved it. And then, you know, go figure that Ricky comes into my life as I'm already doing this, sort of magnetized to that. And we're doing it for people and sending people things in other states that they don't have access to, my mother and family and friends. And, you know, I'm doing this at, at my law firm. And, and um, this dovetailed with a time where Ricky was uh, going and speaking at a lot of cannabis conferences, like the kind of places we meet each other and meet other people. And I would start to go with him to these conferences. And I realized, wow, there's a, there's a whole industry here growing out of this. And, and yet we don't see as much of the medicinal part of it that we would like to be seeing. We, we see there's something bigger here. This is the start. This is kind of the, the beginning of it. But we could really see ahead of what this would flower into and into herbalism and plant medicine in general. Cannabis is just a part of it all. And I started learning through him. He started teaching me things. And I, and I was like, I can't be a lawyer anymore. It's just not cutting it. It, it's so, it feels so empty at this point. I, I love the education, but now it's time to close that chapter and do something that really feels more mission-based and purposeful. And so we essentially created Real Wellness as a platform and as a business in order to keep doing what we were already doing. For the people in our lives, um, but to monetize it so that we could do it full time instead of just something on the side so we could help more and more people and put more of our creativity into coming up with more and more things, um, products, um, guidance, you know, various things to help people as, as the world's changing. And we're, we're seeing that happen right now. So we really kind of had a head start on what's happening in the world now of, of people, um, uh, being interested in, in, in educating themselves on, on these herbs, on this plant medicine in their homes. And, and we're here and through Ricky's expertise, we're here to distill that down. And as you say, translate it into something that kind of people can start with step one and keep going and going and keep, keep learning and learning as he's done. And as I've done, if yeah. what, you and, know, and even more in, in just in general of helping people learn how to take care of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, and my path mm -hmm. started as a football player and, football is, is a very brutal sport and so I had injuries that that affected my physical my emotional my, my mind that really affected me in, in a lot of major ways and I found that the doctors or the healthcare people that football players at the time had access to couldn't really help me and so I had to learn to find ways to start taking care of myself and so when I retired in 2004 one of the things I did is I, is I found yoga and I started to learn about herbs and after that year off, I came back to the NFL and played another six years. And except for surgery to re repair my torn pec, most of the injuries I had, I took care of myself. Because if you think about it, who knows your body better than better than you do? No one. You know? And I think the fact that we've given our mm -hmm. we've given the responsibility of taking care of ourselves to doctors, to other people who don't know us, our, don't know our bodies as well as we do. Yeah. And so we want to empower people to get in touch with their own bodies, with their own hearts and learn what they need and what works for them and learn how to take care of themselves. And I think times like this where people are holed up in, in home and, and there's a lot of fear related to their health, it's very empowering and gives you confidence to have a sense of how do I take care of myself? Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that we've really been mobilized into to getting out into the world are uh, tea kits. And, you know, as this all came up, we were already talking about it. And so we, we were prepared and, you know, running around town, sourcing, <laughs> sourcing these herbs as, as the town is trying to shut down. It was an adventure to, mm -hmm. you know, to see what we could do to help get a product out into the world that would help people build their, their immune system, mm -hmm. to give them the strength to, to, to fight this, this virus, you know, and, and the, the information that I had from, from studying Chinese medicine, a couple years ago, I came across this, this formula 800 years old that's been used to help people build their immune system and typically it's given to kids at the end of the summer to help them build their immunity for all the colds mm -hmm. that tend to come when they go back to school mm -hmm. and and so I was telling her this is something we should come out with you know in the early summer and promote to you know the people that tend to get sick in the fall and then this came up and I was like well you know people are starting to get sick and, and the immune yeah. system is coming into question let's put this out into the world now to help people become strong enough to beat this no, it, it's incredible. And you guys actually sent me one here um, and, and definitely making this after. So, you know, this is the tea kit that they're putting out right there. And, and this couldn't have been at a better time. I think, you know, what you guys are doing from an herbalism standpoint is amazing. 
Um, based on what you guys both said, there's about a hundred things that I want to expand on, but let, let's kind of touch on this, right? Ricky, you had talked about um, after you came back to the NFL and you took care of most of your injuries yourselves, right? In athletics, we're starting to see a lot more behind the scenes look and recovery is a massive focus of every single athlete. I think they say something like LeBron James spends three quarters of a million dollars on recovery for his body. We're at a point in time now where cannabis has been taken off the banned substance list and a lot of the athletic commissions, um, at least from a CBD standpoint, have any athletes reached out to you in order to figure out how to use natural medicine for their recovery? Um, is that something that you're, you know, kind of, I don't want to say preaching, but bringing to the table for people now? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, there hasn't, there haven't been many players that have, that have reached out yet, but it, that's very much my, my mission is, is showing people how to use these, how to understand these, these herbs and how to understand themselves. You know, the idea is, is the herbs come from the earth and they're made of the same, the same atoms, the same molecules that our bodies are made of. And you know, we've, we've evolved alongside the, the plant kingdom. And so there's this ancient relationship and to, to learn to tap into that and understand that is it's really miraculous. And a lot of the simple things that, that we struggle with, um, with our health, a lot of chronic diseases, uh, Western medicine, allopathic medicine doesn't really have very many answers. They can just mask the pain, but the nature of the way that herbs work with our body is they're, they're built to help our body come back into balance. And, and so we're trying to get this message out there to, to counteract, um, you know, the more abrasive pharmaceutical model. And pharmaceuticals are great. If, again, when I had tore my pec, it was great that they could, you know, knock me out and sew it back together and give me some yeah. strong pain pills to get back on my feet. But over the long term and the chronic things that tend to, to bother a lot of people, pharmaceuticals tend to cause, they're too, they're too strong. They tend to cause more, more problems than they, than they help. It, it, it's almost to me like pharmaceuticals should be the last resort when the natural stuff doesn't work. You know, we can bring in, I don't want to call it chemicals with some of the, the big guns. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Linnea, you know, there, there's stories that I hear both of you guys talk about a lot. So you guys met and, and you were doing the corporate attorney thing, bringing natural remedies to the people in your office, making them feel good. And then wasn't Ricky doing the same thing on his end? I remember you guys always tell a story about Ricky, you making medications for your kids, herbal remedies for your kids when nothing else would work. Yeah, well, I've always been like a caring person. You know, when I see someone in pain, I just naturally feel like I want to do something to help. And so when I retired in 2004 and I started studying, you know, I moved to Northern California and, it, and enrolled in a school to learn about natural medicine, I was, mind was blown. I was learning about all the stuff I was just talking about, how plants can be used to help things. And, you know, at the time I had a, a three-year-old who was since from the time he was born had really bad eczema, you know, and, and I just would be in tears at night watching him, you know, in his crib, scratching his, his skin off. And so as I was learning about these things, naturally, I was wondering, if, can I use what I'm, what I'm learning to create something to alleviate the suffering of my son? And so I was in Northern California and I got a medical wreck and I was volunteering in the herb lab at school. And so I had access to a lot of cannabis and I had access to a lot of other medicinal herbs and techniques on how to turn it into medicine. And so I would get herbs from, from my dealer <laughs> and I would get herbs from school and I would come home and I would make stuff and, and I would try it on, try it on with my son. And it was a, just the most amazing feeling to be able to take my knowledge and, and, and to create something that helped, that helped him suffer less. And to this day, you know, he's, whenever he's not feeling well, he'll ask me to, <laughs> for a concoction or, or he's even getting into it himself and taking his own, his own wellness and his own health in his own hands. That's really cool. So we'll fast forward. You guys are both natural healers doing your own thing, kind of, I don't want to call it a side hustle, but a little hobby that you guys are doing just out of the goodness of your heart because of the type of people that you are. Ideas fall in place. I remember hearing a story about the name Real Wellness popping up and then Real Wellness becomes a company. Uh, Ricky, you are the creative mind behind the formulations, the chief uh, scientific officer. Linnea, you take on that business role and, and some of the you know deals that I've seen you do and, and the things you've done for the company have been absolutely incredible. And I give you amazing credit there. But the original incarnation of real wellness is not what it looks like today, right? Um, 
you know, obviously there was a goal of mixing cannabis with other herbs for these natural remedies, but in the early days of really well, of real wellness, you guys were almost fighting against recreational cannabis to try to educate people on, Hey, you know, it, it's not just cannabis for smoking and using it, but you can combine it with all these other things for a much larger entourage effect. What were those early days like trying to be a medicinal company in almost a recreational state? Yeah, do you want to touch on that? No, you're the business person. I mean, it it was interesting. <laughs> I mean, we it, it was it was interesting because you're right. I'm like, wow, we are we're very different two years later because we did, you know, as I said, we were going around to all these conferences, you know, and people were would come up to Ricky and be like, "Where's your brand, dude? All the, everybody's got a brand. Where's your brand?" And you know, we talked about it. And he said, "Well, I I don't want to just roll out a brand and just slap my name on it. I want to, you know, I really want to make medicine and and uh, you know, we need, we need people, we need help, we need partners, we need, um, in order to go into the THC space, we, we need to partner with someone who has the proper licenses and permits. If we really want to jump in quickly, um, you partner with people who've already done the work, the legwork. So that was our strategy was to get the company going. Let's find, uh, people who are doing, doing things at a, at a quality that we feel comfortable with, um, partner with them. They provide uh, the resources and the infrastructure. We provide the formulas and the branding and the story. And uh, that's how we launched two years ago in, in March. And that partner uh, was in the THC space in Southern California. So it was, a, it was, they were already in it. So it was like, let's create this brand and go into our world. And, and, they were excited about the idea of, of putting out products into these dispensaries that weren't just cannabis products, that it was cannabis enhanced with other herbs that, that had this entourage effect and this enhancing effect that none of the other products in the dispensaries had. Yeah, we had a, a vape. Um, oh, I missed that vape. We had a vape called Hedy's and it so was, good. yeah. And it was, uh, I think it was, it was six to one. Uh, THC to CBD, and it had four herbs that were, were great for headaches. And the idea was, you know, when when you if you have a headache and you take an Advil, you have to wait like 30 minutes before the Advil yeah. kicks in. Or if you take a uh, if you have a headache and you and you take an edible, you have to wait even longer. And the idea of inhalation, it gets into your system really quick. And so, I came up with this vape idea to create quick relief for uh, for headaches. Yeah, I, I've been. I still have this actually. Oh, yeah, it's we still have. Yeah. the real wellness logo on yeah. it <laughs> his and hers right here yeah. um so yeah so that's how we started and so we 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 launched initially as a as a primarily thc company sort of to get you know we were like listen this is where everybody's paying attention this is the herb that everybody's paying attention to right now so let's get in that conversation um and use that opportunity to get in there and then start opening the door to other types of plant medicine, right? And we're seeing this happen with psychedelics now and all of that, but you know, those obviously have to be he heavily regulated, um, but there's a lot of herbs that do a lot of mildly psychedelic things that do a lot of interesting things to the body um, that are fully legal and fully accessible. And now in the information age and the age of you can buy anything off the internet and get it delivered, there are all kinds of medicines out there online that you can order and have delivered to your door. And so that's what we're starting to gradually teach people is that process. But yes, the, to answer your, your initial question, the, the, the THC world in California has been a roller coaster to say the least for the last two years. Um, and a, a really huge learning experience to, to realize you can have a, you can have a great brand, but, you're also at um, at the whims of whatever the regulatory structure is with all of its changes in the particular state. So right now, California is imposing very high sales taxes in the dispensaries. That makes it challenging for our target demographic coming in there and purchasing these products. So we realized that um, our can of curious, primarily female demographic was still not comfortable coming into the dispensaries. We had a couple products that were CBD only, such as the one that's on, on the desk right there, the Optimize. And we thought, well, why only have it available in a dispensary where only a small number of people are permitted to come in every day? 
let's create an e-commerce website where the CBD only products that we have, we can sell them to a, a wider audience. And this was at, as the farm bill was, was passing, right? So we did that and, um, you know, the dispensary, the dispensary environment was very challenging. It did not uh, yield all of the, uh, the green rush that, that everybody describes when they get in there. It just didn't happen for a number of reasons, but um, it happened because we are, that, was, that wasn't our true, our true home where we felt really comfortable. Um, but it got us our start, you know, it got us, it, it got us our start into now going more mainstream and now even for the first time having a product that uh, has no cannabis in it so that we can show you how great an herbal product can be even with or without cannabis in it. No, I, and I think, I think it's awesome what you guys are doing. And I kind of opened up the, the optimized tonic because this is what turned me on to real wellness personally. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel kind of honored that I've got to take a, a front row seat to see the company transition into honestly, the embodiment of what you guys do, right? Um, it could have been really easy for Ricky to meet with a couple cannabis companies, slap his name on it, come up with a brand and, and that just be what you guys do. But you wanted to take that education that he had and truly put medicine out there. You know, I talk on this podcast a lot about the medical side of cannabis, right? At the end of the day, the companies in California and even some of the companies in Florida and everywhere across the country, all they're trying to do is grow the best marijuana. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's some R and D. So there's some innovation in that, but I've had pizza that didn't come with the best tomatoes on it. That was still pretty <laughs> damn good. Right. So, you know, cannabis is, is just an ingredient where I look at somebody like Ricky and even though cannabis is legal right now, Ricky, I still feel like you're ahead of your time by taking that and mixing it in with the other herbs that are really going to advance wellness for people. Right. Um, you know, how, how much, how much better can cannabis really get from where it is right now that people are putting so much R and D into the growing process versus someone like you who is like, okay, I'm just going to take some really good stuff and mix it with all this other stuff and create a, a natural remedy from it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, one of the ideas came from, I uh, went to my, I was at my dentist and I was having some dental work done and, and he was writing a prescription for me and he just kind of paused and he laughed and he said, you know, this big, this big deal with the opioid crisis is interesting. He said, because when we give you this, the opioids really just make you forget about the pain. And it's actually the aspirin in it that thins the blood and helps deal with the, the pain in the body. And so when he said that, I was like, well, there's herbs that are like, are like aspirin and cannabis can be is like an opioid. And if you combine them, you can create a healthier painkiller that's doing the same thing. And the added benefit to, to cannabis, at least in my experience, is you know, when I was taking opioids for pain as a football player, I was, you know, in an altered state, but I wasn't really having uplifting, like spiritual thoughts. And I've noticed with cannabis, you know, that that altered state, I'm having bigger thoughts that are connecting me to myself. And I, and this is the idea behind real wellness is that we're not just the body. And so that true medicine is going to not only treat our body, but it's going to treat our, our heart and it's going to treat our mind and hopefully even our soul. I think cannabis is, is this kind of medicine. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I think what you guys are doing. So let's talk about real wellness a little bit. So real wellness is an absolute awesome company that I think needs a ton more attention um, because I, I don't think that you guys need to get mixed up in the cannabis conversation. You guys are putting medicine out there, right? Honest to goodness, herbal medicine, you know, the, the optimized tonic has CBD in it. Um, same with the serenity and the other things. And it's there to, you know, create a full herbal effect. But I truly believe, and, and Lene and I were talking about this earlier, that what you guys are doing with these teas are absolutely incredible. And, you know, again, I, I'm privileged to a lot of behind the scenes conversation, but uh, Linnea, you were telling me that you guys are coming out with a, a tea version of the optimized tonic as well, too. So, you know, it's not just going to be your traditional tinctures that you're used to from the CBD industry, but you're going to have some truly herbal formulas and what's more pure than boiling herbs in water and, and drinking what comes of it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And we're, yeah, I'm really excited. Sorry, Ricky. She gave me the secret sauce of the roadmap, which you guys are coming out with. I know. I was like, I know. Um, but it, but the, you know, that optimized one is, is exciting because it's based off of similar to the, to the immunity, the protective shield formula, that optimized formula that we call optimized, we added cannabis to it, but the six herbs that were in it before we added cannabis to it, 
that's also an ancient ancient formula that's been used for hundreds of years and how you know we've talked to you about how um, it's a flow state formula and it's been used by martial artists right and how you can see how people uh, performing martial arts or golf is you were what you were using it for and noticing it, the performance oh, yeah. enhancing effects of it you know and and we got this idea since we've been quarantined is now that we're uh, going more full force into the teas than we ever, we weren't doing teas our first two years, we were doing vapes, tonics and salves. And now the teas have really cropped up in this time. And now it's making us explore, whoa, what if we, cause these formulas that we make can be made in different forms, right? The optimize can, you can take those herbs and you can put them in a tea, you can put them in a tonic, you could put them in capsules, you could do all kinds of things with them. Put them in a joint. Put them in a joint, <laughs> smoke it. I mean, there's lots of ways to take, you know, medicine in different ways. And so we were like, why don't we, we have all the herbs at home. We have hundreds of herbs here. Um, and so we threw them together and put them in a tea bag, just like we would with the kits that we're making people. And it was, I, I mean, we know we've loved this formula, but when we drank it in tea form, I just couldn't believe, I was like, how have we not done this sooner? Um, and Ricky's daughter, Marley, who has been helping us with the tea kits. I mean, she's basically our contract manufacturer for these tea kits, <laughs> um, which is wonderful keeping it at home in the family. But she was like, this is better than the, the tea that you, you buy like a yerba mate or a kombucha, you know, she's big into all of those. And she was like, this is just as good chilled or, or served at room temperature. And she said, you know, and, and to take this before you go on a run or to take this before you do yoga, because it is the optimize is a performance enhancing formula, right? Like the, each of the formulas yeah. have a different purpose. And that one really is to enhance you. If you're already feeling pretty strong, if you're feeling kind of weak, you want to take the protective shield because it's a warrior's formula. that's going to bring you back up. But this one really enhances you to that next level where you're having your best golf game you've ever had. Right. Oh, it, so it, it, I just can't have me a hundred I'm going to send you some because you're going to, I think you're really going to like the taste of it. And, it, you know, what I've learned too is just in talking to people is humans really like the ritual and the experience of drinking something, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and feeling something from a drink, whether yeah. it's feeling um, a stimulus from a cat, from a Coke or from a coffee or the, the, the buzz you get from alcohol or the feeling you get from, you know, a tea or a yerba mate or how you feel from a kombucha people love to drink and that's not going away anytime soon and so i'm i'm really excited about taking this sort of hustle that we did with the tea kits during this time and expanding it even further into uh, beverages because i do believe this herbalism is just on the cusp of exploding into the beverage industry where we get the next level of you know gatorades and all these performance enhancers it's now going to come um through plant medicine in a bottle no, I, I think it's awesome. And I mean, the story behind the optimized tonic, um, we had met, I had met Matt Cohen just based on bringing you guys into our event series and potentially doing some business together. You guys sent me a sample of the optimized. I'd never really taken CBD at all before. I, you know, I'd been a cannabis user and I took it. I was going on a golf trip with a group of friends to Hilton Head and I am not that great of a golfer. And I think I'm, I may even be giving myself more credit by saying that because a lot of my friends are going to watch this and laugh. But we, we split us up into three tiers of golfers, the best golfers, the intermediate and the worst. I was in the worst group of golfers, right? And the whole point of this golf trip was to win your group. I took optimize the whole trip. And typically, I'll have this problem where, you know, I'm a bigger guy, I lift weights, I don't do recovery whatsoever. So when I go out on the golf course, I don't really loosen up till holes eight through 13, maybe. Um, but I went out there as if I was already loose and I played so well, I beat not only beat everybody in my group, but I actually beat everybody in the group above me too. Really? Um, and, and almost tacked on that, that top golfer group. So everyone was thinking I was cheating. Um, you know, and, and after that I was sold, I started, you know, we went to a golf tournament shortly after that. I started giving samples of optimize out to everybody. Like, Hey, you want to play better? You got to try this stuff. Yeah. That's, I, I mean, it really is a performance enhancer. I know it's, it's, uh, it's sort of a novel idea. It's novel for us at this stage to think, oh, plants can enhance it. It, you know, but it, it people are gradually starting to wake up to that. 
and and to use these in in uh, really optimal ways where where they get the kind of result that you had and i just think what a what a great result that we made something that and that's where medicine can spread into so many different arenas where i've realized so many different things are medicine you know for you to have a day like that you were so excited when you told us about that and you were just so like that feeling of like having a really great golf game and not just by yourself but with a lot of people witnessing is just really oh, yeah. It's just a really good experience for you to have, you know, and like, you'll always have that, <laughs> you know, I, I, I take it daily now because of it. Um, it. It's, it's been incredible. And I think all the products that you guys put out, I mean, you guys sent me when, when my daughter was born, I was in the hospital just to try to get some rest, the serenity tonic. Right. Um, you know, it, it's for some reason at every milestone in my life, you guys send seem to send something that's very appropriate for it. I mean, that's what we're trying to do, you know, and, and that's where it, that became really clear to us when Corona hit, because I even noticed the same sort of energy that kicked in when our friends and family were asking us for help a couple years ago before we had a company. And we were just kind of scrambling around, buying some things in the dispensary, making things. Ricky would make ghee, infuse it, send it to my mother, you know, different things like that that feeling of we've got to help people, you know, people are, people need help. People aren't feeling well. And we think we have something to offer that they don't have access to, or it doesn't occur to them that they could do this. And now with Corona hitting, it's like, it's like part two of that only it's now much more um, dramatic. It's the whole world, but it, that, you know, we were on a path to do a number of things with this company. And when this hit, it was almost like, okay, we got to drop everything. And it, how can we call ourselves a wellness company if we're not going to adapt and respond to a health crisis in the world that's happening, right? What's the point of, you know, pushing a certain product if it's really not of interest or relevant to everybody in a viral time when everybody is concerned about their immune systems? And I wasn't hearing anybody in the news saying anything that sounded very empowering about what they were doing to keep their immune system strong during this time. You know, it was toilet paper and Clorox and maybe sometimes people would talk yeah. about this, you know, but I wasn't hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer hand but sanitizer. nobody was saying these are the things that you can ingest as medicine, as preventative medicine while we wait for a vaccine to come out, which is going to take a while. And this is why we're seeing the, um, the, the, the less compelling side of Western medicine. You know, we're all sitting here saying, okay, the FDA and they've got to mix all these chemicals together and they're trying to learn about this illness. And we're like, that's great and all, but there's a formula that's been used for hundreds of years of how people have dealt with viral times just like this. That's a wonderful preventative medicine to stay strong and action oriented in uncertain uh, warlike times. This is a warrior's formula. And we, we, again, everything comes back to wanting to empower people. Everything we do, whether it's this or whether it's astrology is to empower people mentally and physically. And this is a time of great crisis where people need to feel uh, physically and mentally empowered. And we're gonna keep putting things out there that we get positive responses to, to say, okay, we're, we're gonna keep trying to get this out now. And, and you know, we're learning as we go too, you know, but, but again, Ricky has had a head start on everyone with the many years of um, plant-based medicinal study that now everybody's starting to get interested in because of the, the crisis. Rick, Ricky, you seem to have had a head start on a lot of things just by making the decision to be yourself and no matter when or where or how that occurs you're yourself and i mean and you made that decision in 2004 that you can comply to what the nfl wanted you to be and continue having a career and continue to make a seven-figure income or you could be yourself and i feel like being yourself has led you to a ton of amazing opportunities that you're able to take advantage of post football yeah well that's that's really the heart of real wellness i mean as I started studying different healing modalities at the root of all of them is the number one cause of disease um, is not knowing who you are. And if you don't know who you are, you can't be who you are. And so uh, that's, that's our message is, is be yourself and any way we can help. Uh, we're here to do it. Very cool. Well, I know I've probably gone on a lot longer than I asked you guys for, so we can start wrapping this up. 
Um, but I could literally sit here and talk to you guys for hours. So we're definitely going to have to get you back on in the future. Um, Ricky, maybe do some Q and a with you just really showcase that education because it, it's incredible. It, it really is incredible what you're doing, the stuff that you're putting out there um, to see somebody who had so many accolades from an athletic standpoint, now really flexing your brain and, and putting the goodness out there. I don't know whether to call you Dr. Williams or professional professor Williams, but it, it's going to end up being one or the other. Yeah. That's my sense. Doctor. <laughs> I can't, I can't help, but, but chase knowledge because especially the knowledge that can be useful to other people. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's send people where they can go because I think everybody needs some immunity tea in their household. Um, I believe the site is realwellnessherbal.com. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely go check out the tea. Is there anything else that you guys want to promote? Actually, let's, before we go, there's another project that you guys are working on. It's outside of the cannabis industry, but it's very much has to do with the two of your stories. And I think it's awesome. Do you guys want to mention the other project that you're working on um that you recently talked about on your instagram yeah so it's it's very like fitting you know because a lot of people ask what's it like to to work with your spouse you know and and you know the highs are wonderful and the lows are 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 difficult but <laughs> but it's all worth it and we've we've found in each other like fulfilling work life and a fulfilling relationship life and we both you know it's our both of our second marriage and we've learned a lot and so, again, wanting to share information with the world that we found very useful. And my astrology teacher, Stephen Forrest, is, in my opinion, one of the wisest men on the planet Earth. And we partnered with him to create a dating app that uses astrology to help people understand themselves and their own individual relationship needs. And it really does come back to this, this, this earlier theme I talked about, of learning to take care of yourself. Because I think one of the biggest things we can do to take care of ourselves is choose the right partners. <laughs> you know, we choose, we, we make poor choices in our partners and it's one of the ways we, that we abuse ourselves and, and, and we cause the, mace, the most pain and suffering in our lives. And so if we can be wiser in understanding ourselves and understanding the kinds of people and the kinds of relationships that are gonna be nurturing to ourselves, then it's easier to have real wellness. And so um, <laughs> when, when I, Take again, take this this great information, this great knowledge, and put it out to people to help them make wiser choices in relationship. Yeah, and that that company is called Lila L I L A, and uh, you can uh, people can go and sign up to be a beta tester on this. Um, it's in the beta testing phase, and it's uh, the website is heylila.com. Is there anything else I should about that? No. Um, and oh and then with respect to the to the tea kits at uh, real wellness herbal um if anybody watching this wants to uh we have we have discount codes in our names um so if anybody wants to purchase it and get um a 20 percent discount on it they can either use my name or ricky's name it's either ricky 20 or linnea 20 uh will work as a discount code at, at checkout very cool so definitely take advantage of that um it won't, definitely won't. check out t check out Leela for sure um i won't i'm a happily married man but i have some single friends that i will certainly direct that way that's Wait. the other thing about about Leela. it's yeah, what makes it a what makes it different it's not just a dating app it's a dating and mating app and so it helps you wow. understand yourself and connect to people but once you find your person right things come up and and really we believe that relationships are are the most amazing opportunity we have in this lifetime to grow spiritually. Because when you're sharing a life with someone, all of your stuff comes up. And to be able to navigate that stuff and grow and, and learn and evolve through it, it, it brings the relationship closer and it gives a spiritual meaning to the connection. And so, you know, part of the app is, yeah, helping you understand yourself and find partners. But the other part of the app is once you find a partner to help in understanding yourself and understanding your partner and understanding essentially why you came together and how to make the most out of the out of the partnership it's it's really a revolutionary app because it's it's um it's doing something that none of the apps are doing the apps are either sort of dating apps like tinder where you're meeting somebody for the first time and sort of auditioning for them and then once the match is made it's like okay delete tinder from your phone because there's nothing else here to offer because yeah. we found our, our match 
But then there's other apps, whether it's like CoStar, like the pattern where you get on it and you already know the other people, right? You find people that you already know on that app to give you information about the relationship. Leela is doing both those things. So when you log on, you either identify as somebody looking to meet people in the Leela universe, or you're coming in like you as a married man saying, I'm here with my wife and we're here to dive in and get information about ourselves and our relationship and our attraction functions and how they work in order to enhance an already existing relationship. So it, it is an app that is applicable regardless of, of whether you're quote unquote single or partnered. It, it's one that you can use through and through your entire life, which is what we're really excited about. Well, then I'm going to change my previous statement and I'm absolutely going to check it out. Um, probably going to order myself some more optimize, some more tea. Looking forward to when the optimized tea comes out. Guys, I, I can't thank you enough for A, being in my life and then B, being on this podcast. And, you know, it's something I don't think that you guys know is Ricky. You know, you talk, Linnea, you had mentioned how Ricky saw something in you that you didn't see yourself. And you're like, hey, I'm a corporate attorney. That's not me. Ricky, you did the same thing to me when I shared a story uh, with you guys on the phone. I didn't even know that you were on the phone. And I talked about the first time that my mom discovered that I use cannabis. And I want to say happy birthday, mom. Susan, <laughs> Susan Rosales, she's very young today, but it is her birthday. So I want to say hi. Um, but I told you that story and you popped out of nowhere and you said, you know, Todd, do you write? And I said, I don't write, but I've been asked to, and, and we had a conversation about it. And, you know, I, that, that resonated with me. And I wish I can, obviously I'm not writing, but I was listening to a podcast uh, called The Fighter and the Kid. And I was listening to them. And, and one of the hosts, Brendan Shaw, was a former UFC fighter. And now he's a stand-up comedian and does podcasts. And I was thinking, and I'm like, you know, I'd love to be able to write. I do love telling stories. And I go, I can't write, but I can certainly talk and tell stories. And that's really where this came about. So if it wasn't for you dropping that bomb, you know, into my head, this would have never happened. So thank, I can't thank you guys enough for all of that. Um, anything else you'd like to say before we get out of here? Last thing is you, you're really good at this. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm yeah. like, this was wonderful. Yeah. I would like to ask you to compare it to the Be Real podcast, but I mean, <laughs> that looked awesome. So I can't even say that. Uh, maybe when we're in person, we can do something like that. But uh, I watched both. I watched the the smoke box and I watched the other Be Real one. And it was really, it was really good research for this. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah, no, awesome. you're well, uh, yeah, we love you and and it's it's cool to see you do this because it, you know, echo what Ricky said is it it looks like you've been doing this a while. You're a natural at it. So um, yeah, that, that's just the microphone. It makes me look a whole lot more professional. <laughs> that does help. That does help. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, we are going to end this episode of Elevate Your Grind. Ricky and Lene, if you guys can stay on one second after we go live. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I hope this is really educational. Um, I wanted to introduce you guys to some people that I really look up to and, and someone who I think really needs a lot more attention on his second act in life because what he's doing with herbalism trumps anything that he did on the field. I know, ironically, I decided to wear a Buffalo Bill shirt today, mainly because Ricky sent me an awesome signed jersey, and it's a Dolphins jersey. And now for the rest of my life, I have to have a Dolphins jersey on my wall. But I figured, you know, during this interview, people are going to have to look at a Bills logo and see you. So that's the football fan of me. Thank you, guys. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We are signing off.